everybody, Relic Knights Week lands next week here on BeastsOfWar.com and we have some fantastic prizes up for grabs. Five in total. So, four lucky winners are going to win a two-player starter bundle to get you and a mate into the game. This will include two starter factions of your choice and the rules you need to play. We then have our fifth prize, which is a special one. You're going to win an expanded two-player starter set for you and a mate to get into the game. Again, with those factions of your choice and the rules you need to play. But as well as that, this lucky winner will get to design a new miniature for Relic Knights with the design team at Ninja Division. Stay tuned next week for your chance to win. Alright, everybody, myself and John are back for another unboxing. And it's time to have a look at some more Conflict 47. Yes! Uh, this is a game that has really captured my imagination this year. It really is. Uh, it, it's managed to get you not only slightly in, more enthused to historical, but it has oh, actually brought me into a little bit of Weird War. But it has actually allowed me to switch faction, which is something I really wanted to do. Because, yeah, because you went US. Yes, I went US in this, and mm -hmm. this is the Mud Skipper. Mm -hmm. This is amazingly cool. It's a beautiful looking piece of kit. Mm -hmm. uh, your instructions are on the back here. I'm guessing it's going to be a metal and resin hybrid kit again. So you get would your be super correct. glue out. Yep. Uh, let's crack it up because I just can't wait. So, John, uh, can you give me some of the basic rundown on what this thing is? Yep. So, the Mud Skipper is one of the newest walkers off the production line. A heavier platform to give jump infantry some real, some genuine punch. So, essentially, this is after the Americans have developed their jump tech for their infantry. Yeah. Um, they went, right, so they have that. Hmm. We now need to make a flying tank. So it's, it's almost the same way that the, the real World War II guys were going. It was like, now that we've got parachute infantry, let's see if we can drop a tank with them in a glider. Yeah. Which kind of worked, except the tanks they were dropping were utter cag. So, <laughs> this, see, I don't know, against light infantry and stuff, a tank is still a tank? Uh, no. Panzerfaust? No, not when you look at the stuff that they were actually dropping, like the Locust and the Tetrarch, they, they were completely useless. Okay. Okay. So this this is the weird war take on that philosophy, and I'm yeah. liking where they've been taking this. So. Yeah. Well, did the Russians not actually try to do, you know, glider tanks? Oh, they did. Know? They tried. It failed. Yeah. Did the, the wings take off and the tank just went on? No, the designer's son got compressed spinal injury after they did a test drop. Okay. How about now? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get on to the components. So we've got the the main hull here with the really nice canopy. It's almost aeronautic in yeah. design. Now I want to say again. I can't remember if it's Clockwork Goblin or Warlord that actually do the manufacturing of this. Right. I have a feeling it's Clockwork Goblin. Either way, hats off to the two of you for getting a model that complex in a single piece cast. Yeah, because you've got you know pipes, cabling, and then the main jump propellant system here. Yep, it's a very cleverly designed, thought out model, mm -hmm. well executed, and I tip my hat to both of the, yeah. the guys in this because that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So we've got that, and then I'll assume this will be the waist assembly because yeah. up around the back we have more of those repulsors mm -hmm. or whatever the, the format is they use to actually get this thing airborne. Mm -hmm. You've got the nice big chunky legs. They actually look like stripped down versions of the grizzly legs. They're which, not as heavily armoured. Yeah, which works well because they actually mentioned it in the little bit of the background thing that you know they did try and strip down a lot of the weight on this thing to make it more viable. Yeah, so here where you would have had that, that big sort of screw looking piece. It's mm. a nice flat plate. The armor plate around the actual knees and stuff is just a little bit lighter. Mm -hmm. And of course, you do get two legs because he's not going to hop about. No. Uh, even being able to get like little details like pistons and stuff to actually work is already on there yep. is really, really good. You've then got the arms. Again, they look a little bit stripped down. The armor's a little bit lighter. Mm -hmm. you know. But I assume this thing still operates as a medium walker. Yeah, John? Yes, this is still a medium walker as far as the rules go. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just going to check it. Uh, yeah, so... It, Get plus medium walker. Mm -hmm. What so, is nice is what you're about to open, which is all the so, weapons. Yeah, the metal bits. Yeah, the weapons are what make the this guy, along with the special rule of actually being able to jump. Okay. So we'll get to that in a minute, but the weapons are superb. Okay, so uh, first things first. I'll assume this is two light auto cannons that are going to be mounted onto this, nope. yeah? No, nope. those are those are machine guns. Oh, these are MM okay, machine guns. Yep, those are uh, HMGs. Okay, so we've got two HMGs. I love the big drum mag they've designed onto these. Isn't that gorgeous? It just yeah, it looks really really mean. And then okay, I'm gonna make the guess then that these are the auto. Cannons. Those are the auto cannons. Yeah. These are quite beefy. Mm hmm. They're very nice. Really nice. Then we've got these, which I assume are some form of shock absorbers. Yeah, they're springs to go on to the back of the uh, ankle joint, I think, on the legs. Oh, I see. I see. So I there see, are a couple of extra bits there. All right, we then have 
a medium machine gun here. Yep, so you have medium machine gun and you should have the option which is twinned bazookas. Twin bazookas? Yep. Okay. So that's one of the weapon options. You can remove, let me see here. Uh, what you, right, let's go through the weapons. Right. So we just lay it out clear. Okay. So the weapons as standard. Twin forward facing light auto cannons. Lovely. Forward facing MMG. Yep. And then a left and right arm mounted HMG. So there's right. two of them. Yeah. So you've got two HMGs, like one under each arm. That's a lot of firepower. Yeah, that's a lot of DACA. Yeah. Now replacing, you can replace the HMGs on the arms. Yep. Uh, with two arm mounted bazookas. Right. So I, I like the fact that this has quite a bit of utility to it because mm -hmm. you can either go, okay, I know my body's bringing lots of infantry, let's load out with those HMGs, or yep. okay, I've been seeing some extra armour just hanging around the back of this field, yep. let's throw on some bazookas there and let's see what we get. Yep, and what's nice about that is because you can take that bazooka option, mm. you're playing with one of the most highly mobile walkers in the game as far as I'm concerned at the minute. Well, I mean, like, walkers in general are pretty mobile with a standard move of 12 and a run of 18, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah. But that changes with this. Okay. Because, you know, because you're a ground pounder, you've got to negotiate your way through some terrain you'll not be able to pass through, that sort yeah, of well, thing. Yeah, when are we refought Pegasus Bridge? Your, your mechs were having to weave and duck and bob, yeah. Yeah. Um, not so much with the Mud Skipper because it has the jump special rule. Okay, now what does that do? All right, so I'm going to flick the page. Hopefully not lose your place. Nope. It's good. So, <clears throat> jump. Mm. Vehicles with the jump special rule ignore terrain. Right. When moving, or sorry, ignore terrain when moving, uh, so are always considered to be moving in open terrain. So that's, if they're out there, you know, that's, they so have no I, impediment, they just go for it. So hang on, there's, there's a building right in front of me. I can ignore that. Yeah. Because you're, ta you're using whatever the technology is, the repulsor tech or whatever, it just lifts itself off the ground and just travels. Right. Um, a vehicle with the jump special rule may also move over intervening models so long as it has enough movement to clear the troops and can land one inch away. Right. All jump movement is conducted at the vehicle's run movement rate and must be in a straight line. Right. So this thing can jump 18 inches. Yeah, and it can jump over your stuff. Which is important. Yep, so it can go over my models and it can land within one inch of yours. So what I could do is, I could use this at the end of the turn, last activation, jump over you, hope to get an early activation the next turn, swing it round and just shoot into the rear of your vehicles or something. Yep, if you've got those bazookas mounted up, you've got a very good chance of getting rear armour on a vehicle. That's nice. Mm -hmm. That's very That's nice. very nice. It's very scary as well because if there's objectives and stuff that you're holding, all of a sudden you now have to fight on a new front. Yeah. Now, I would want to run maybe two of these, although are they expensive? Um, let's have a look. Because the points value, I know this is really high-end stuff for the Americans, so I'm yep. not expecting cheapy cheapiness here. Right, so let's have a look here. Um, well, it can only be bought as a veteran. I see that as no bad thing, because I like running veterans. Yep. Uh, it's 240 points base. Uh, so if you add... That's a bite. But, I mean, you're only, you're only increasing that to 250 by taking the bazookas. Sorry, 260, because you're adding 10 points per arm. Is it 10 points per arm? Yep, per and arm. Can I do one arm and not the other? I guess so, yeah. Let's, let's read it. Well, all it says is options. Replace HMGs with two arm-mounted bazookas for 10 points per arm. So you can have one HMG and one set of bazookas. I no, I don't think so, because it says replace HMGs. So I think you are forced to. There, there's one for the comments section. Can you take one bazooka arm, one HMG arm? I would say you can, because why would it say 10 points per arm? If you couldn't, you know, it's it's saying to you one arm of bazookas will cost you ten points because all I you're suppose. doing is replacing the base value equipment anyway, which is the HMGs. All right, well, but one for the comments, guys. Pop it in there. All right, I'll tell you what, John. I want to see how this thing looks built and mm. primed. All right. Mm -hmm. So I think we'll take a quick break here, and when we come back, we will have our mud skipper ready for a look. Okay, everybody, we are back. The mud skipper is built. John, mm -hmm. how's the build? A very easy build, very nice. Obviously you have your typical thing with a bit of resin, you know, shave a bit off here and there and mm. that's it, done basically. Yeah. Um, so really went together quite well, mm -hmm. I'm quite happy well, with I mean, it. Like, overall it's, it's a really nice mean looking kit. I mm -hmm. see you went for the, the machine gun option. Yes. Which is nice. I do like on the top here you can actually see the ammo feeds coming up and through. Mm -hmm. It's a very very nice mm -hmm. little detail. In fact I think I can get a little closer here. Yep. And yeah, you can see the ammo feeds, that nice canopy. 
the ball going at the front. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it just it looks really, really mean. And then you've got the impellers here as well, which is oh, or, yes, is yes, it impeller yes. or repulsor? Uh, probably gravity repulsor of some description. Yeah, but it's it's so nice. So, so nice. Mm -hmm. Can't wait to see how it plays on the tabletop, because it's, it's going to be very interesting to be able to jump over enemy troops and stuff. Yep. Yes, you have to leave that one inch gap, but you get across behind something into an objective, maybe. That's, that's really going to mess with your opponent. I, I have a feeling, tactically, I'd be using this on... I, you couldn't use it on its own. Mm -hmm. So you'd need either two with it, or you'd need some infantry to back it up. Yeah. Because if this thing landed behind a tank and didn't destroy it in one turn, <laughs> all that German infantry or whatever is going to turn around and go, you offend me. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if I have German heavy infantry running with Panzer Shrikes yeah. or Panzer Boys. Well, it's one of the things we're still waiting for for the Americans of Conflict 47, which is their jump infantry. Yes. Because they are going to have, you know, flying infantry. Mm -hmm. I, can, I can cool. imagine the 82nd Airborne or 101st Airborne list that will come out for Conflict where it's just all jump infantry and jump max, and I'll be like, mm -hmm. that is cool. Yeah. That'll be really nice to see. Yeah, although I'm waiting for, you know, a special with this thing just holding... Two aircraft bombs and its arms and just as it flies over. Whoop. That would be kinda cool, wouldn't it? It's like as I'm jumping, I'll just randomly chuck this bomb. There we go. You know, just, yeah, little little hitchy. It needs a giant like pineapple grenade or even a heck a, a an enlarged German stick grenade. Just, just strap a tall boy to us back. Oh yeah, because that would work. <laughs> yeah, let's let's stick a nine ton thing onto something that probably only weighs fourteen. Because <laughs> it'll have enough thrust for that. <laughs> hey, sci fi tech. I can science that. We can science that to it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> but, never mind, actually. You know uh, what? I don't care. No, but you get what I mean. Because having one of these that would jump over and actually drop a bomb as it goes, it would be a very interesting mechanic. I may experiment with that for maybe a future game that we play, just as a house rule. So maybe as it does a jump in the line that it jumps, it drops, like let's say, like a grenade explosion or a single yeah. artillery yeah, or like something. Like a HED-3 like or something. Yeah. Light yeah. bomb. Oh, yeah. like, like an actual... Um, like an artillery strike. Or a tank's HE shell, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Just as it's flying over, it just drops something. Yeah, yeah just that would be kind of cool. That It could work, it could be interesting, and it could be a very fun little house rule. So I think I would like to try and do that with this. Yeah, that could uh, be cool. Tell you what, guys. Drop your comments in below. Tell us what do you think would make some cool house rules for this. I've got my idea of it just dropping bombs as it flies, because, mm -hmm. of course, it's flying, and it's got that kind of bomber command look. You know, on the cockpit here, that just actually looks a bit aircraft-like. Of so. course. Yeah, why not just, you know, just drop a couple of bombs to the armpit. <laughs> and job's good. Uh, myself and John on here. We'll get on to the next video. Like I said, drop your comments down below. What would you play this with in Conflict 47? Mm. Are you waiting for those American jump infantry? Or are you just going to run this normally and have it, you know, just be skipping all over the place? So, uh, we'll see you in the next one. Fight for the Iron Kingdoms as a Warcaster. Take control of the mighty Jacks, arcane devices, and dark sorceries to bring the fight to the War Machine Hub on BeastsOfWar.com. Progress comes to a world of magic as science and the arcane combine to make marvels. Meet steampunk inventors and orc mystics at the Volsung Hub on BeastsOfWar.com.